the Sovel SV06 is the best budget 3D printer you can get right now. But it just got better. My name's Jim and this is the Edge of Tech. Sovel just released the SV06 Plus. They took an already amazing printer and made it better and much bigger. Like the SV06, the Plus was super easy to assemble. It unboxed pretty quick, and once that was done, it only took me around 15 minutes to get it fully ready to print. And the best part is, it's only around 12 screws or bolts to put in to get it all together. It was super easy. It has a new larger build volume of 300 by 300 by 340, and that's a huge upgrade over the SV06. It still runs on the 32-bit silent board, and this thing is very quiet while it's printing. It still uses that all-metal hot end with the planetary direct drive system, but in the SV06 Plus, they've upgraded the melt zone to make it much larger. They say that makes it capable of printing 150 millimeters a second, or up to that at least. It also still comes with that touchless bed leveling right out of the box, and it also features that 25-point leveling system. So it'll keep this thing nice and level, even though it's a much larger build area. They've also stuck with that PEI flex plate, and it's just a much larger version of what was on the SV06. It still works very well. Using the dual Z motors, just like the SV06, this thing is nice and steady on both sides of the gantry. And let's not forget about that awesome Z alignment where it raises all the way to the top and runs itself in so it actually levels itself out and then it comes back down. That is still such a great feature that I like to see on these printers. The built-in bed tensioners make this thing super easy to tension your belts, and you shouldn't have to worry about that if anything gets loose, because you just turn the knob and it'll tighten it right up. Somewhere where Solval went a little bit different on the SV06 Plus was the control screen. It's now a 4.3 inch touchscreen, and I found it pretty good to use during the testing so far. It's not terrible, it's not the best thing in the world, but it works pretty good, and that's all we need. Another cool feature is it has day and night mode if you ever wanna switch that out, which I thought was kind of fun, but I keep it in night mode pretty much all the time. <laughs> Real quick, if you're getting value from today's video, please consider smashing that like button. It really helps spread the video out through the community, and I really appreciate it. Also, if you're new here, please consider hitting that subscribe button to see more awesome videos on 3D printing, CNC, and lasers. Now back to it. If you're familiar with the original SV06, then you won't be surprised that there are not wheels and V-slots on this machine. It actually rides on rails, just like Prusa machines, and it doesn't use wheels or V-slots anywhere. One of the big differences between the SV06 and the SV06 Plus is that the power supply on the Plus is now 500 watts. The power supply on the original was only 350 watts. So that's a 150 watt upgrade for this much larger machine. Speaking of that power supply, that and the control box still sit on the back of the printer on the rails. I never had any issues with this on the original SV06 and I haven't had any issues on this machine either. So it really doesn't bother me that they're not underneath the machine. Another great upgrade on the SV06 Plus is the spool holder. It now rolls better thanks to some bearings that are installed inside of it, and it comes with a filament runout sensor attached. This is huge when you have such a large printer because it's inevitable that you're gonna go through a lot of filament when you print something very large. Something you don't wanna do is lose a print because you run out of filament and it just starts printing in midair. So a filament runout sensor is very welcome on this machine. And from what I've heard, you can actually use this on the SV06 and it will plug into that board too. So that's a huge bonus for you SV06 users out there. I just wanna briefly talk about the slicer as well. In Prusa Slicer, which is the slicer I choose to use most of the time, all I did was take my base SV06 profile and make it bigger. That profile worked very well, but there's one big thing about it. It was kind of slow. I did try the Sovel Slicer, which is just a reskinned Kira that came on the SD card, and that prints much, much faster. So what I'm probably gonna do is take the speeds from that and drop them into my Prusa Slicer settings and make that thing much faster using Prusa Slicer as well. With the claimed speeds up to 150 millimeters a second, that should really help on making things that are very large. Let's talk about prints. Well, I can tell you that the small things printed just about like the SV06 does. Uh, there are some layer things with this, but I have no idea how it was sliced because it was already on the SD card. 
But I can tell you, we're not here to talk about small things because most people who are gonna buy this printer are gonna buy it to print big things. So, out with the small. So like any smart person who just set up a brand new printer and has done no testing, I threw the biggest thing I could on there, which was this Brian Vines, the BB3D desktop trash can. Uh, well, from this side, it looks great, but it failed. I have no idea why this thing failed. Um, I wasn't here when it was failing. I mean, it finished the print, but for some reason, the print that was on this back side, so this was sitting back this way on the printer, uh, started doing some weird stuff. I don't know if it hit something. I don't know if it's, I have no idea. But I can tell you what printed, printed very good until it didn't. Um, so I got a little bit crazy. This was actually printed with some very old rainbow filament I've had probably for two or two and a half years. Uh, I have no idea if it's good or not. I just threw it in there and let it fly. So like any other same person, I threw other filament in and I did it again. But same thing, same side. I am not sure what's going on. I also used the same G code. That being said, it was not the Sobel Slicer who did this. This was the Prusa Slicer profile I had. And I don't know if something was just funky in the slice or something happened on this side. We'll find out, I'm gonna figure that out. But I can tell you it does print very large things and I'm willing to bet that this can be figured out pretty easily. I just need to put a little more time into that. I didn't have time before the video to figure that out. But I did wanna show the fails because fails are fun too, right? <laughs> He's so big. Brian, your trash can's awesome, man. I love it. The second thing I printed was the print in place garbage truck by Whopper Printing. I don't have it here because my little guy has both. Yes, I made two of them. He has them both at the house and I forgot to take one. He plays with it pretty much every day. And then we put it on the garbage grabber arm and then dump. It came out very good. The overhangs were very good. There's a lot of bridging in that model. Everything works right off the build plate. It was easy to take off the build plate and my son absolutely loves this garbage truck. Another thing I printed was this heartbeat vase right here, and this comes to us from Thangs, and that was loud. <laughs> and Dave makes stuff. This printed very, very good. There was no issues with this vase. Uh, obviously, it's not the full height, and I have one coming that was the full height. I just didn't get it done in time for this video either, but it is sliced on here, so I'm gonna try to print it. Uh, it came out very good. I, it's nice and thick. I believe I used a 0.6 line width on this, so nice and chunky. It came out nice and thick. Uh, it, it's a very nice vase for vase mode. And my wife loved it. I gave her this for Valentine's Day instead of real roses because, well, real roses don't last very long. And the roses themselves are printed in the TH3D spaghetti filament and you can find that in the description below for a discount, so check that out. This filament is awesome. This is uh, dual color, and it came out really, really cool on these roses. All of the files that you saw today for things I've printed will be in the description below as well, and they're all free, so check them out. Hold it, hold it. Future Jim here. Actually, after I sent the files to Caleb to get editing, this finished. I printed this face almost the full height, and as you can see, it came out great. No issues like the big trash cans. Uh, I am not sure what was going on, but I know that I did slice this in the Sovol slicer, not uh, Prusa slicer. And also I know that it's a smaller diameter at the top than the trash cans. I am gonna reprint the trash can again, but I did wanna show an almost full size print in this video to kind of prove that it actually works. I, I'm super excited this came out very good. And now I have like a mini trash can compared to the other ones. But it did work and it came out great. Now back to the video. Overall, I really like the SVO6 Plus and I am adding it to the fleet for large projects. I do believe I can fix this right here. I will get that fixed. And I just didn't get time before I filmed this video to get one properly fixed and printed, but we'll do that. Other than that, it printed very nicely. Everything I would expect knowing that its little brother is the SVO6. If you're thinking about looking at one of these, it's on sale now. Look in the description below, you'll find an affiliate link which really helps the channel out. It doesn't cost you anything else, but grab it while it's on sale. Uh, I promise the price is great. I believe the first, what, 300 units or something are only gonna be $300. And after that, uh, it goes up a little bit. So check it out, grab one if you can, even if it's 400 or less dollars, this thing will be very worth it for a printer. 
And if you haven't seen the original SBO6 video, I ended up having to ship it out. You can find out why if you click this video right here.